This is the 22nd of July of 2020. And um, the name of this study is I am his and he is mine. Uh, in my studies this morning, my soul got real excited again about some things that I had come across and I'd like to share them with you. First, we're going to pray. Father, in the name of, Je in the name of Jesus, I ask you to bless uh, your word. Only your word goes out. Bless my eyesight and my speech. And bless everyone that's listening to the sound of my voice, Father, that Holy Spirit penetrate their heart, write on the tablets of their heart your word, and give them such a desire to know more of you that they'll never be the same. Father, I ask you to keep it quiet inside and quiet outside. And cool in, in this room, Father, and like I said, only your word goes out in Jesus' name. So the name of this, like I said, is uh, I am his and he is mine. And I was started this morning reading in... Uh, Song of Solomon which some, like I said some things caught my attention first we're going to read Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 39 Deuteronomy 4 and verse 39 know therefore this day consider it in thine heart that the Lord he is God in heaven and upon the earth beneath and there is none else hallelujah so then when we um, realize that the Lord, that Jesus, and see, and we meditate upon the glory that is his person, we see the significance of what he said in John 19 and then verse 30. Let's look at that. John 19 and verse 30. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. What I want you to notice there is, It is finished. Now keep that in mind. So everything that he's already done, given us, this is what we're going to talk about. Okay? So, uh, I belong to him. I belong to him because of his election. I belong to him because he chose me. And so we're going to look at Ephesians 1 and then verses 4 to 6. Ephesians 1, verses 4 to 6. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us in the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein we has made, he has made us accepted in the beloved hallelujah and let's look at first peter uh chapter 1 verse 2 first peter chapter 1 and then verse 2 Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and grace be multiplied. Hallelujah. Then let's look at John chapter 15, verse 6. John chapter 15, and then verse 16. John 15, and then verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. All the, we need to just realize all of the gifts, all the spiritual blessings, as well as all the physical blessings and the financial blessings. The fruit of a womb blessings that he that, that our creator has given us hallelujah so it was given to jesus christ by father god and we see this mentioned seven times uh throughout john chapter 17 so let's look at john chapter 6 verse 37 john chapter 6 uh in verse 37 
all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I am his because he made me. And let's look at that. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4. Ezekiel Oh, it's after Jeremiah. Uh, I'll find it. Uh, Ezekiel 18 and then verse 4. Okay. Ezekiel 18, 4. Behold, all souls are mine, as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. And I'll stop right there. Okay, I want to look at Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Colossians, for Philippians, uh, verse 1, it's uh, 16 and 17. Colossians 1, 16 and 17. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> and then, you know, in John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, also tells who Jesus is. And let's look at that. My favorite, favorite, favorite. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Oh, how sad darkness comprehended As people in the world, a lot of us people in the world did not comprehend it, and a lot of us knew it and didn't want to, don't want to accept it because we love our life. How sad. How sad. I am his because he, he bought me. He paid for my redemption. We know that. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians 6. Okay, verse um, 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And also, let's look at um, 1 Peter 1, 18-20. 1 Peter 1, 18-20. Peter 1, 18-20. For inasmuch as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I am his because I gave myself to him. I chose to give myself to him because he loves me, even though I'm unlovable a lot of the times. You know what I mean? And I'm definitely unfaithful and have unbelief some of the times, which I always ask God to forgive me of that in Jesus' name. But I'm, uh, but even though I'm this way, and I'm like that at times. He's still faithful. Remember, though, we have free will. See, we all have free will. He doesn't have robots. He doesn't want robots. You know, or he would have made us all machines. You got to do this and he would have programmed us. He does not want us to be that way. He wants us to do it on our own. Let's look at Romans um, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, 
holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 6. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 6. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for that. Hallelujah. 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 So we just uh, we just discussed the ways we are his and he is ours. Let's look at one more here. Girl, uh, let's look at another thing here. Um, uh, Jeremiah 31.3. Let's look at Jeremiah 31. And then verse 3. Jeremiah 31. And then verse 3. Jeremiah 31, 3. The Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Now he, his spirit draws us to the cross draws us to accept Christ and is our free will to accept him or not. See, thank you, Father. So how wonderfully and, and gloriously he is mine and I am his. Okay, see, I am safe and secure in his arms. And we're going to look at that. John chapter 10, verse 27 to 30. John 10. Twenty-seven to thirty. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So in Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 39, um, we're told nothing can separate us. I got enough time. Let me go to, then I go there. Uh, Romans chapter 8. Thirty-five to thirty-nine. Thirty. And then I'm going to tell you some things I found out about this error here. What was going on during this time? Romans thirty-five to eight, thirty-five to thirty-nine. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, um, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now at this time period right here, when uh, Rome, the letter of Romans was written, Paul wrote this to the Jews that were going back to Rome. And, and he's He's addressing this to the few people, very few people, in fact, that were in the house churches. They met in their house. They prayed for each other. They ate together. They looked out after each other. But during this time, it was uh, around A.D. 49 by edict, which an edict, E-D-I-C-T, is an order or a proclamation by somebody that's in authority. So at this time, it was Claudius was in authority there. And uh, he made all the Jews leave. And from what um, from what is said here, uh, actually there was a Roman uh, a Roman Catholic priest 
if I got that right, I know he's a Catholic priest. His name was um, Fitzmeyer, F-I-T-Z-M-Y-E-R. He was a, a, a Jewish Christian, but he was, wait a minute, he was a Jewish Christian, uh, what do they call those? Like he wrote about the history. He wrote about the history. So um, he was a Catholic priest. And what he says is during that time, Claudius expelled the Jews because the Jews, you know, doing their traditional things and the Jewish um, Christians were at each other's throats. They were at odds. So that's that's what I've learned about that error. If anybody else knows anything else about that error, please let me know. Because I had a hard time finding just that little bit right there. So, I'm going to say wow. Okay, um, our bridegroom will always protect his brides. And our, the bride is the believers, right? So we know that the, the bride, we know that the church are the individual believers. We know the bride of Christ are the individual believers. See, when we know the building is where you congregate at to learn and to edify each other and edify your own spirit. So you got to remember that we believers are not the church. The church is not the bride. The individual believers are the bride. All right. I don't know why I just said that, but I said that for someone. So this means that I am wealthy because he is wealthy. And I am also spiritually wealthy, right? If we look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Let's go look at Ephesians. Um, chapter 1, like, and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all Spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Hallelujah. 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 And let's look at uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 16. Romans 8, verse 16. The Spirit is self bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Hallelujah. Love it. Love it. Okay. Um, this all means the Lord has given not only himself but he's he's given all he has to us isn't that awesome not only given himself but everything he has to us okay he's given us gifts himself his pardon his eternal life his glory his peace his love hence the scriptures in the song of solomon is remember i told you i started off reading song of solomon this morning they're 100% true. So if we look at a uh, Song of Solomon, we see verse, uh, we see chapter 2, verse 16. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, in verse 16. My beloved is mine. And I am his. Hallelujah. And then if you go Song of Solomon chapter 6 verse 3. It says it in a couple other places that he is mine in a way or his. Even in Ezra in the book of Apocrypha I found the same, I found the same saying. Um, Song of Solomon chapter 6 verse 3. I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father. I thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you for loving us. Thank you. So this means he's given himself to us. In turn, a true follower of Christ has fully given themselves to him. Okay? There is no other. He is first. This means spending time with him, studying his word, meditating on his word, praying, praying in tongues, asking for every gift. You want everything he's got to offer everything that he's got to offer not just you, you know oh i accept you just don't be content and i even put up a video here about a little while back about do not be content with where you're at and that's what i was talking about you know and uh so anyhow right now 
I'm going to say this prayer I like saying, and you can just say amen if you agree. If you don't agree, that's fine too. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to forgive me of known and unknown sin. I ask you to show me any dark spots in me so I can repent of them. Father, forgive me for not forgiving myself. Father, I ask you to help me forgive myself and others that have hurt me. Father, of my own free will, I choose to forgive anyone that has caused me pain or injured me. I apply the blood of Jesus Christ over these sins. Father, wash away my sins, the sins of others that have wounded me, and the sins of my ancestors. Father, apply your dunamis power to our soul and to our soul wounds, Father. And we know that that dunamis power raised Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. In fact, um, a dunamis power raised our dead spirit up to remember the spirit uh you know was say his spirit quickens it's our spirit to make us alive to him hallelujah and now i know that my sins are forgiven and my soul wounds are healed father in the name of jesus christ i pray these things now the scriptures that back this up is uh, leviticus chapter 17 philippians chapter 3 verses 10 to 14 3 john verse 2 Psalms 103.12 Father, please upload this video quick and fast with no hiccups, Father. Touch everyone within the sound of my voice, Father, that they will uh, grow in knowledge and grace and grow to want to know more of you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.